We can do it today, but the patient said, oh, not so loud, I can hear it too loud, turn down the audiometer. And, and, and there was some idea that there was a bone conduction was maybe something to, to look into. At the same time, uh, Ulla Lien was a faculty opponent on a dissertation where he evaluated um, the sound transformed to the cochlea when doing normal drilling. And that was the second starting point for the bone anchor hearing aid. And the third was, of course, uh, our patients um, with this conventional or old-fashioned uh, bone conduction um, hearing aids with our uncomfortable most of these patients who have wounds, sore, they cannot wear it, they have headache, a lot of discomfort. Um, and also it's the sound quality is very poor as most of the high frequency sound is um, uh, eliminated in the soft tissue. And um, it's in the high frequency sound area where we have the consonant sounds so important for speech understanding. And then of course it still is in many societies a stigma of old age or incompetence or whatever. So patients in need of hearing may not always wear a, a hearing aid like this due to this. The first patient, this was one of the first patients and you see the coupling uh, was a, a once again handmade um, a primitive coupling glued to an ultimate transducer and this was one of the three patients that uh, we had. And today we have some um, uh, 40 to 50,000 patients worldwide um, with the Baha and this is what it looks like today with the coupling and with the hearing aid. The traditional indications for this is chronic ear and still is about 70% of our patients are patients with chronic ear. A hole in the drum that drains or it doesn't work cannot use a conventional air conduction aid. And also, uh, if you have conductive loss in the only hearing ear, every ear surgical procedure involves the risk of that you make that ear deaf. That's why we do not dare to operate uh, the only hearing ear. Ear canal atresia surgery is one of the most difficult things that we have. And if you're bilateral, know where, where place to place uh, the uh, air conduction aid. And also, we have patients in need of amplification. Um, and who have problems with their ear canals and cannot wear a conventional air conduction aid. These are the traditional indications. Um, the new indications is uh, bilateral fitting. 50% of our patients at our unit here in Göteborg with need of uh, bilateral hearing loss uh, do have bilateral fitting. And it's very few of us wearing a monocle, most of us by glasses, so why not bilateral fitting? And unilateral conductive loss, we had a normal hearing on one side and the conductive loss on the other side. When I started in this field, and I was told that that doesn't matter, you have normal development. But it has turned out that this is not true. And just one uh, indication that a baby who has a normal ear on one side and an atresia on the other side with a normal inner ear uh, is um, says um, the first word spoken is at the same time as the normal peers, but already the two word sentences is significantly delayed. So bilateral hearing is important. Then this is a new thing, and we come back to that a little bit later on, but the basic principle is that if you have a dead cochlea after surgery, after trauma, or whatever reason, we can have Baha on the deaf side, and transfer the sound to the hearing cochlea. And that seems to work uh, very well in selected cases. We come back to that a little bit later on. Well, the ultimate goal with a surgical procedure is to provide the patient hard of hearing with a hearing device with the maximum performance and minimum risks and few problems over the years to come. And how to achieve that? Well, first of all, to establish OS integration. Without OS integration, no bug.